Hey everyone, this is Steven Weintraub with Collider, and I am thrilled to be with this all-star group to talk about moving on at the Toronto International Film Festival. Gentlemen, I really want to start with, I'm a fan of all of your work. Thank you so much for coming in. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much for having us. Thanks. Um, I love throwing a curveball or two at the beginning before we get into the movie, but all three of you have illustrious resumes. If someone has actually never seen anything you've done before, what is the first thing you'd like them watching and why? Well, this film. <laughs> Um, but no joke, I think that sort of, uh, you know, it's one wonderful thing about working with actors who've done so many great performances over decades is that you can kind of see glimpses of the great performances in a current performance if they challenge themselves and if it's uh, the kind of beautiful work that Malcolm and, and Richard did. Obviously this film as well. And um, I'd have to go back for a film um, once upon a time when we were colored. And the reason being, that was the first time my dad had ever acknowledged what I do. My dad was a very religious man. He didn't go to movies, he didn't drink, he didn't smoke, and he didn't come to the premiere of the movie. And he was out visiting me in California, and we were sitting out on the, on the, in the living room, and I said, Dad, sit down, I want you to see something. And he sat there the entire time and saw this movie. And without looking at me, he said, well done. So that is very special to me. That's a beautiful story. That is. <laughs> My father only saw me once uh, in a movie and um, unfortunately not quite as nice of a story and that the movie was Caligula. <laughs> <laughs> My father uh, came to stay with me in Rome and um, kept asking, when can I come to the set? You know, and I went, you know, dad, I don't, tomorrow's not a good day. You know, we've, we're on location of lying and, you know, tap dancing. And anyway, this went on for a week or more. And I came down at six o'clock for the driver and my father's already in the car. <laughs> And I thought, oh, God, what am I shooting? Oh, God, I've got to piss on a camera on, against a, a marble pillar in the middle of a speech. Oh, Jesus. I thought, oh, well, you know. Anyway, I get to the thing. We rehearse it. I, they're plying me with coffee. The director goes, are you ready? I'm like, no, one more coffee. And I take my coffee. I go up and I went, I am Rome. Wherever I am, out it comes. <laughs> pissing against the thing. Wherever I am, Rome is. Oh, God. Oh, that. And then two servants come and clean it up, as they would in Caligula's time. And, I, and I'd forgotten, of course, my father was there. And when they said, cut, I looked around, started. My father, who had a cane, you know, he had a bit of a gimpy leg, jumped up and he went, that was fantastic. I've never seen acting like that. And he goes, you pissed like that on cue. <laughs> That's also a great, thank you for sharing that. That's great. Um, I'm so curious for the two of you because you um, have been in the industry for so long. When did you feel as at, that you could make a living and pay your rent as an actor? After the premiere of Shaft, um, that's when I, <laughs> I'm really going back now. I remember my grandmother who lived to be 103 years old. I took her to see a play I was doing way off Broadway, Canal Street. <laughs> that's way off Broadway. Yeah. And, uh, if it was 25 people in there, it was standing room only. And Miss Lucy is, is sitting in front of the stage and watching this play go on. And I'm standing in the wings watching her. After the play was over, I went over and I said, well, Miss Lucy, uh, what, did, uh, what did you think of the play? And she looked at me, boy, is that the way you're gonna make a living? <laughs> Yes, <laughs> but that was that was the start for me when I 
felt it comfortable on stage and then we had the the, the chef uh, premiere and i said oh, this might go somewhere well i i was um started out you know as a 20 year old actor um, in weekly rep at one play a week at a summer season and i was play paid i think eight pounds a week which would I'd probably be today maybe $50 a week or something. Um, and I thought, you know, I died and gone to heaven. You know, it, it's all, um, you know, it's all a matter of where you are in your life. I was just as happy on that as I am getting big, great big sums because um, it's a matter of uh, where you're at artistically being free and having fun, I think. So it, in terms of money, don't ever be an actor if you want to be rich Hello. or famous. <laughs> Forget it. Uh, if you want to be a, a good professional, that's something else you can work on really hard and, and that's it. And, you know, I started off my life in London, in England. And uh, there, the tradition is the theater. There's no film business, or there wasn't in that, those days. And if you got a film, it was like a golden nugget. It would pay your rent for the year. And it was like we all wanted to do a movie. And, um, you know, I was very, very lucky to be cast in a movie called If, which became a huge called celeb movie you know it was a, a revolutionary movie about a revolution in a boys school and um, in particular a public school which in England is like a private school in America and it's where the um, aristocrats sent their sons to be educated to go out and rule the empire so-called and uh, you know I met this great director Lindsay Anderson and we became friends for the next 30 years until he sadly died and so um, I didn't really make any money until my second movie. The first one, I, I would have paid them. I actually got paid 90 pounds a week and that soon gone. And I had to wait a year for the damn thing to open because in those times, editing, scoring it and doing all that, they took forever. And then the movie won the grand prize at the Cannes Film Festival and that was it. Kiss my ass. <laughs> Kubrick saw it, cast me. I didn't. And that's the last time I think I auditioned. Uh, thank you for sharing this story. Um, uh, Paul, I have a question for you. You've made a number of movies. Um, which of the films that you have made changed the most in the editing room in ways you did not expect? Um, actually, about a boy. Uh, um, we uh, um, we had uh, Damon Goff, uh, whose uh, stage name is Badly Drawn Boy, do uh, the music for it because Chris and I, my brother, I did that with my brother, which was a lovely thing to do, is to direct films with your brother, assuming you get along, which we we do. Um, and uh, when we were writing the script for that, we were listening to his music all the time, and we said, well, what if we could get him to do the music for the movie? Um, and so we really eventually edited a lot of it to the music because we knew ahead of time what songs we were going to have. And um, uh, and then so there were a lot of kind of surprises and um, some arguments between Chris and I over what was going to work or not. And uh, um, we uh, so, yeah, I think I think that one changed the most, actually. Jumping into why I get to talk to you guys today and I appreciate your indulgence in my early questions. Um, talk a little bit about the genesis of the project. Um, actually, what does it mean to all three of you to be in the Toronto International Film Festival with the movie? Because this is my favorite festival and everyone here just loves cinema. And I'm just curious what it means to all of you. Um, it's great for me. The, the first movie that I had my name on was an animated movie called Ants, um, which had uh, Woody Allen, Meryl Streep, Sylvester Stallone. It was one of the first big sort of uh, new generation of animated movies. So everybody thought, oh, this is my chance to be in an animated movie. So everyone everyone they asked said yes. Um, and Gene Hackman was in it. Um, uh, and uh, so, the, but but anyway, that, that movie uh, premiered here at Toronto and I haven't been here for the festival since then. Um, uh, and uh, so it's, 
it's really lovely and i'm i'm very excited to have this very um <laughs> uh homemade movie um uh, be premiering in front of 2600 people on tuesday um that should be a, an interesting experience um and uh it's it's you know it's lovely to all be here the the um yeah so well this is the first time uh being at the Toronto Film Festival. I've only attended one other film festival, the Cannes Film Festival, for, for with a film that uh, no one has ever seen. Um, but this one I am equally excited about, being in this film with this role, with this cast. And it has been a joy ride, to say the least. The last time I was here was with Robert Altman who, of course, I mean, just needs no uh, explaining. Um, he was an extraordinary man, a dear friend. And um, I did one of his last movies called The Company about um, a ballet company. Neff Campbell was in it. And uh, it's, it's a really wonderful film. It's a, the quintet, not the full orchestra. Um, very beautiful film. And of course, Bob, uh, um, I go back to 1970 with him. So we used to party together. That's all I need to say. I never got out of his company unless the dawn was breaking. And I think, oh, why am I doing this? But he was such a charismatic, fun guy to be with. And so I remember this place as one of the last times I really spent a long time with him. And I think I've been uh, films I had here a couple of times before that. I think of one called Gangster Number One. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm getting mixed up with my film festivals, but um, it's uh, certainly grown. It's um, considered one of the great festivals, and, and um, it's a real treat to be here. I going to what I almost uh, was my question, which is, uh, what was it about uh, this story? What talk a little bit about the genesis of the project because I believe you wrote it because of the chemistry of your two leads. Yes. Um, so uh, I had done a film with Lily Tomlin called Grandma. And um, around that time, I met Jane Fonda. And um, and the two of them asked me if I would write something for them. And it kind of stuck in my head. And then I had this idea of, of uh, uh, the opening of a movie of people going at a funeral. There's a widower. Even this movie is played by Malcolm. And people are saying, oh, we're so sorry. We, we, we loved you, your wife so much. We love you, et cetera. And, and there's a procession of people giving condolences. And then one woman who in this movie is Jane comes up and says, I'm going to kill you this weekend. <laughs> um, and and that's, the, that's the beginning of the movie. And that was the genesis of the film, basically. And, um, and then it sort of like uh, just subconsciously built itself around that. Um, I'm not very good at being tactical about what I should do or shouldn't do. It's really if I, if I have ideas that are building themselves. Um, and, and then it's it's sort of making things richer and richer. One of the things uh, about the film that, that, that resonated strongly with me is that um, uh, it's built on someone being angry. I don't want to be specific, but it's built on someone being angry about something that has really affected their life. And they've carried that anger with them for so many years. Uh, and even myself, I... I I relate to that. I think we've all at some point been wronged. Um, and I'm just so curious for the three of you, are you able to let go of when someone has wronged you or you're angry at someone or it, are you able to let that go? Because it's something that really stuck with me about the film. In my situation, <laughs> there is a mixture of pure unadulterated anger and intellectually, I would like to let it go. But emotionally, it is just, it just, it just grinds at you. So when I ask Claire, uh, what, 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 what happened? I really want to know what transpired. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I've let it all go. I got <laughs> married and I have two grandchildren. But what, tell me, what happened? How many wives you have? Hmm? <laughs> How many wives have you had? Just two. Oh, well, hey. 
That is not bad. Not, <laughs> we're talking Hollywood here. Just two wives? Jesus. I got you beat there, buddy. And by the way, may I just say that I am the youngest member of the cast in this movie, <laughs> which just shows you <laughs> that this is aimed at the young crowd. Um, well, I, I, I do think, though, that when you have a really fierce emotion and something is, uh, when you start to let it out, then all sorts of things can happen. And Jane Fonda's character in the movie um, uh not only it's it's an interesting tightrope because she has this thing she's f furious about and wants to get revenge for and at the same time she's coming in touch with things in her past that she loved and and sort of doors for instance with richard in terms of their relationship uh that were closed um and that that begin to open so uh there's also a lot of love in the movie which is nice i would imagine that making any project there's a day or two you're always going to remember um, especially for you with this group of actors and the and the people that are not here today. Um, what's the day or two that you'll always remember from making this film? Um, just, a, you know, a fun day on set or a challenging day on set? For me, definitely in the Griffiths Park, looking at the carousel that inspired Walt Disney to build Disneyland or Disney World, whatever it was. Um, I learned that out later. I was quite taken with that. This beautiful old carousel and um, it's a very intense scene and um, full of uh, the full gamut of emotions. And, um, and the weird thing was, it was pages. I can't remember how many. And uh, we got there so early, I think I'd finished it by 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, I thought we were going to be here slugging this out all day. And um, and the old Paul Weiss, <laughs> by the way, uh, we yeah. would have been. <laughs> yeah, we but, worked together a number of times, Malcolm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah first in a film called Ink and Company. I remember him coming up and saying, Jesus Christ, don't yeah. you have it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how many takes do you want of this fucking speech? And by the way, the speech in that went on um, how long? It was a long one. Yeah, I like to challenge you. It was a brilliant piece, though. But and I laughed at him, and then when he said that we're doing a TV show, um, Mozart in the Jungle, which is a brilliant TV show. I, and he said, we want you to play you know, the old conductor. And I said, TV, right? I said, Paul, this is TV. <laughs> you know, you're not going to be allowed to do like 20 takes. Of, he goes, no, 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 I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> he went, Don't worry. Mm. I got it figured. And he did. mine was uh, caressing Jane Fonda. <laughs> wow. You and Roger Vadim, buddy. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, that was uh, magical. And I said at one point, here I am, wherever we were, caressing Jane Fonda's took us. <laughs> <laughs> so you had the nice Jane Fonda. I had the one who was a total biache. Really? Who, well, yeah, because, you know, I'm supposed to have... Hello. Well, her, her character hates Malcolm's character hates in the movie. Hates my and she was, guts. She hates. was kind of eager to not hang out with Malcolm before because they hadn't met before. And she wanted to keep in her head the image of certain roles that Malcolm had played as opposed to the real Malcolm. Uh, so yeah, so she said, may I please not meet him before we, before we film. So I kind of kept them apart like prize fighters. I, um, I could ask you guys about 17 other questions, but I'm going to have to let you go. And I'm just going to say, I really sincerely appreciate all three of you coming in today, uh, to talk about moving on. Uh, I've been a fan of everyone's work for a very long time, and it really means a lot to me to have you guys here. I'm so happy for you that it's part of the Toronto Film Festival. And I wish you guys nothing but the best. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thanks Thank for you. having us.